Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. We're having our monthly tech meet, and today we're going to be talking about the Silver Shadow series, the differences between the Silver Cloud and Silver Shadow, and a lot of the features, hydraulics, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, the way you get a feel for the brake on this, in other words, the resistance you feel will change as the pressure goes, but on the later cars, they have like a rubber stop. So when the car has no pressure in it, you can bounce that pedal and it. it's kind of funny. It's like a, a rubber ball, boing, 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 right? Uh, earlier cars, what they did is they had a, just a static master cylinder and it's really tiny. It's like, it's, it's essentially the same size as an E-type clutch master cylinder. Uh, these were 5 8 bore, the E-type is 3 quarter inch bore, but that just went to this lower pistons on the rear. So that supplied the feel that you have, the resistance, because you need the resistance to apply those distribution valves. Now, 1974 was pretty much the last year for that master cylinder, and that is a, a low pressure system. It will not stop the car either. I mean, you might have some brakes if it goes, if it, uh, if it grabs well. Um, so that's essentially that part of the system, plus, on these, these trailing arms right here, uh, this is nice because we don't have the differential in the way, but <laughs> on top of the springs in the back, they added a leveling system. So on top of the springs, inside the trunk are some, they're called rams, and they're like a piston assembly that is activated with high pressure brake fluid. That's, that's another part of the system. And what activates them are these height control valves. Now that's if, if I'd like everybody to see these, because these are, can be problematic too. That's a height control valve. Uh, there's one for each trailing arm. So there's one on that side. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> what is it? It's, what is it's, it? Oh, it's this thing right, I'm sorry. This thing, right, I have my pointer. This is a height control valve. There's one for each side. Uh, they are rebuildable. They have lots of O-rings, springs, and valves. And what they do is, if, if you look here real quickly, there's a little link uh, right here that's attached to the trailing arm. Now the trailing arm goes up and down with the wheel. The body does that. So these activate this, put pressure on top of this ram, and when the car is running, when you bleed them, you actually disconnect this linkage, activate it, and you watch that spring compress. It's just a little dangerous, it's a little scary. They have a strap right here. You see this strap that's bolted to the body? It's got grease on it. That's called a rebound strap. And on some of these older rusty cars, uh, they can fail. And I had that happen to me once. I was bleeding a car right here and that thing failed and it came down and it knocked me down is what it did. The bleeders for them on this car, if you see these are bleeders up here by that fuel filter and they go to the respective vent ramps. So the ram has two lines to it, one going in and one coming out to the bleeder. This system is designed, that height control system, so that when you open the door and the car's in park and people get in, or you throw luggage in, it brings it back up to normal height. Okay, so standing height is determined by springs, car off, so you can adjust the standing height by changing springs, shims, whatever, to get it right. And then the height control system is designed to compensate for extra weight, not hold the car up. I've had a lot of people with cars, you know, springs give up over time. Uh, gravity with this big car, um, excessive use, the springs lose their, their strength. Uh, I've seen a lot of these things where they sit down and they'll come in and they will be right. They'll, they'll, you, you look at it, it looks good. And then you disconnect these links on those height control valves and it just falls down. Because somebody has compensated for weak springs by, by making it right on the hydraulic system. So I guess this is okay to some people, but what you're doing then is that's the number two accumulator. That's what runs a height control system along with part of the brakes. It's constantly working to try to hold that. Constantly. It's not really designed for that. Right. 
And there's two modes, just uh, to back up a bit, for that height control system. So when you're in park and you open the door, the interior light comes on, it's called fast action mode. And what that does is it gives all, of, all the accumulator pressure it needs back here to operate it. And then once you put it into gear, there's a solenoid here, it's a height control, or I mean, um, yes. What is that? Yeah, the solenoid, height control solenoid, yes. Uh, so there's a piston in there, and when you put it in gear, it goes to a restricted mode. So it's less, less reaction. It's just designed to maintain. Uh, but when you are on those height controls all the time, and if there are any problems in the system, there's some other things that can go wrong. There's these little, uh, uh, here's one right here. These, this is a restrictor valve. There are two of those. If one of those fails, then what happens is every time you hit the bump in that mode, the brakes come on a little bit. Not a good feeling. It's really strange. <laughs> it's not drastic, but you can feel it if you're sensitive to it. So the system's not designed to work that way. Is that all part of what they licensed from Citroen? It's a lot. Well, they license the system. I don't know exactly. I'm sure Citron has a leveling system too. In fact, the very early shadows, um, when they came out, they had a front leveling system too. So it had rams. You open the hood. There's rams out on top of the shocks, and then there's one valve up front. And it was meant to reduce that roll when you go into a corner. So it's trying to level the, and it was very, very problematic. So, when they were brand new, they were deleting that system, turning that off. Do they still manufacture As far as I know, oh, yeah. yeah. The parking, is that self-adjusting or do you adjust that? Uh, it's self-adjusting in the fact that, yes, you adjust it yourself. <laughs> but that, I'm just being a smart aleck. No, it's supposed to be self-adjusting. Self yeah. There's a little ratcheting mechanism in here. Every time you apply it, if, you go to, if it oh, okay. stretches, yeah. um, and those pads are really thin, so they're just meant to hold the car. Um, I have uh, a lot of, in fact, most people don't even use the parking brake. And on these cars, when they get older, especially an English car, a lot of rust builds up. Tow truck drivers will put the parking brake on because that's part of their procedure. And then cables are seized inside, and then we got to disconnect them to, to get, move the car. So it's always good to exercise things. That's a good point that um, I always encourage people to drive their cars on a regular basis. Uh, and I don't mean start it up in the garage, let it run 15 minutes, and then park it or turn it off. I mean, take it out on the road, exercise it, roll the windows down and up, okay? Turn the AC on, make sure you lubricate that stuff in it. Turn the heater on, make sure the valve opens up circulates uh, and operate the parking brake on a regular basis. What else can you use? The seats are another good thing. All these things, the electrical ones especially, window motors, seats, uh, <coughs> they have gearboxes and motors and they have grease in them. And if they're original on a car that's 40 years old, the grease sometimes petrifies. And then the motors Sometimes the brushes get corrosion on them, so they don't want to work when you want to use them. So it's just like our own bodies, I think. We have to keep moving if we want things to work when we need them. For the leveling system to work, does the engine have to be running? It, if somebody gets in and it goes down... It, it depends, okay, on your... It's supposed to be running, yes, to answer your question. If you have... When you turn these cars off, Essentially, you should have full pressure in the system until it depletes. It will take time for it to deplete. Uh, the, the distribution valves for the brakes, they are little, simple little valves. They've got like a little piston in them, no seals whatsoever. So it's a machine fit. Brake fluid's thin. Uh, you'll get a certain amount of bypassing. So the car, when they sit, the system will depressurize after time. So that's why a lot of times you get in it and you start it up and both red lights are on. That's by design, just to let you know, okay, it's not ready to move. In fact, the res brake reservoir, and we can go look at it this over here. 